Reports are stating that Burnley boss Vincent Company is now Tottenham's number one target to replace Antonio Conte. Tottenham and Brighton have just been charged by the Football Association over mass confrontation. Spurs legend Darren Anderson believes that Brendan Rodgers would play a brand of football that is the Tottenham way. And the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium has just been included as one of the 10 host venues for the UK and Ireland's joint bid to host UEFA Euro 2028. Welcome back to the channel. Hope you're all keeping well. This is another episode of Tottenham News where I'll be going through all of the latest Spurs news, rumours and reports. If you're watching this on YouTube, please do hit that subscribe button, like, share and comment below. And if you're listening to this on an audio platform, please do hit that follow button and leave a review if you can. Let's start with a report from the Sun newspaper. They are stating that Vincent Company is now Tottenham's number one target to replace Antonio Conte. Chairman Daniel Levy has been blown away by the Belgium 37, leading Burnley back to the Premier League in his first season. In this report, it says that Spurs Chiefs have received glowing reports after a stunning season, saw the Clarets promoted in record time, and Vincent Company is increasingly seen as the manager who can give the club a new dimension. Spurs have watched how Arteta has transformed bitter rivals Arsenal into Premier League title contenders, having spent three years working as Pep Guardiola's number two at Manchester City. Vincent Company spent the same amount of time as captain under Guardiola before becoming Anderlecht manager in 2019. Vincent Company won two of his four Premier League crowns with Pep Guardiola, who has tipped him as a future Etihad boss. Spurs are also considering Julian Nagelsmann, Luis Enrique, Brendan Rodgers, Arnie Slot, and their former chief, Maurizio Pochettino. It then states in this report, but crucially for Daniel Levy, Vincent Company made Burnley the championship's most entertaining side after putting almost a whole new squad together. And company is believed to be ready to listen if Spurs make a move, as he fears that Burnley may not have the funds to tackle the Premier League. Daniel Levy wants to get a new boss lined up quickly, with Harry Kane's future again in doubt, and the club facing a battle to finish in the top four. Various reports have been published about this story. This one is from BBC Sport. They are stating that Tottenham and Brighton have both been charged by the Football Association following a mass confrontation during Tottenham's 2-1 victory on Saturday. Spurs interim boss Christian Stellini and his Seagulls counterpart Roberto De Zerbi were sent off after staff from both sides clashed in the 58th minute. The Football Association said both clubs failed to ensure technical area occupants conducted themselves in an orderly fashion. Spurs and Brighton have until Monday the 17th of April to respond to the charge. The incident occurred after De Zerbi's side had a goal disallowed for handball for the second time at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. The video assistant referee, VAR, later turned down a penalty appeal and refereeing body, PGMOL, has since admitted Brighton should have been awarded a spot kick. The Tottenham Hotspur under-18s continue to build momentum ahead of our doubleheader of League Cup finals with a 4-2 win over Southampton at a windswept Hotspur way on Wednesday afternoon. Oliver Iro built on his goal in last week's draw at Brighton with a brace with goals from Jaden Williams and Han Wilhoff King with his first of the season sandwiched in between as we roared into a 4-0 lead with only an hour gone. The game finished 4-2 to Tottenham and under-18s coach Stuart Lewis praised his players for the way that they dealt with the elements to produce a top display, stating, I thought it was an outstanding performance. Obviously, the weather conditions were unbelievable at times with the wind and the rain, but the character that the boys showed throughout the game, the intensity we played at with and without the ball, I felt that we were worthy winners and it was a really pleasing performance. Tottenham Hotspur legend Darren Anderson has come out and said that he believes that former Leicester boss Brendan Rodgers would be the right man to manage Tottenham to take the club forward. He said, I like Brendan Rodgers when he's given top, top players. I mean, what he did at Liverpool, he was so unlucky not to win the Premier League there. 
Anderton then went on to say he plays a brand of football that Tottenham fans want to see. I think it's fair to say. Since Mauricio Pochettino with Jose Mourinho and Antonio Conte, the football has been dire at times. We've got some wonderful footballers, but two very defensive managers that have certainly made for some very dull afternoons at White Hart Lane. So I think that comes into it. Anderton then added, I feel like he plays a brand of football that is the Tottenham way, and I think it would work. On Wednesday afternoon, it was announced by Tottenham Hotspur Football Club that the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium has been included as one of the 10 host venues for the UK and Ireland's joint bid to host UEFA Euro 2028. Formally submitted to UEFA today, the bid sets out our clear and compelling vision for UEFA Euro 2028, football for all, football for good, football for the future. To this vision is a commitment to diversity, social purpose and innovation to delivering an outstanding UEFA Euro 2028 that will create unforgettable memories in sold out iconic stadiums in famous football cities known throughout the world. Venues selected are representative of key cities across the UK and Ireland, including London, Cardiff, Manchester, Liverpool, Newcastle, Birmingham, Glasgow, Dublin and Belfast, all connected by direct, quick and sustainable travel links and provided all unrivaled experience for teams and fans. Now, my thoughts on these stories in this episode, let's start by talking about the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. Of course, it has been included as one of the 10 host venues for the UK and Ireland's joint bid to host UEFA Euro 2028. Of course, we have the best stadium in the Premier League. We have one of the best stadiums in Europe and we have one of the best stadiums in world football. Uh, so, of course, it is always going to be chosen for top events like this. Uh, personally, I would love to see England play matches at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. I think it would be incredible. Now, Tottenham and Brighton charged by the Football Association over mass confrontation. I'm not at all surprised. Uh, you know, a lot of the staff, they just simply cannot act the way that they did uh, on Saturday. Uh, and when we look at Saturday's match, we were very, very fortunate to get the three points. And when you look overall at the two games under Christian Stellini since Antonio Conte left, uh, there have been two pretty dull performances, but somehow we've got four points out of six in the Premier League. We're sitting in fifth place right now. Uh, we've got a game against Bournemouth coming up on Saturday. Another must-win game if we want any chance of getting a Champions League spot. I think that it's going to be very, very difficult to try and get a Champions League spot uh, at the end of this season. But of course, we do have to give absolutely everything. Um, and if it's not Champions League, of course, it will be Europa League. To talk about managers, um, of course, we waited 72 days for a manager and we appointed Nuno Espirito Santo. I just hope that this doesn't happen again at Tottenham Hotspur. Um, in the last week or so, we got an announcement stating that Scott Munn has joined the club as football uh, chief football officer. And I learned in the last 24, 48 hours that Scott Munn will actually be starting his job on the 1st of July. I think that when Tottenham Hotspur put out the announcement, I think that a lot of people assumed that he would be starting the job straight away. But he's actually on gardening leave and he's actually starting the job at Spurs on the 1st of July. So my question at the moment with Fabio Prasci not working at the club, um, and Scott Munn not starting the job until the 1st of July, who is in charge of the managerial appointment? It must be, at the moment, Daniel Levy. Uh, so many reports are coming out at the moment, linking us to every single manager um, under the sun. Uh, and of course, when I revert back again to Saturday's game uh, against Brighton, when Stellini was given the red card and he was walking down the tunnel, uh, most of the stadium was singing Maurizio Pochettino's name. I think that the majority of the fan base want Maurizio Pochettino back. I know there are a lot of fans that don't want him back, but I think the majority of fans do want him back. Uh, but today we're being linked with Vincent Company. Um, I've seen many reports still linking us to Julian Nagelsmann, uh, stating that he is still top of Tottenham's list. But... Uh, the likely outcome there is that he will probably go to Chelsea. He's already been talking to Chelsea, as uh, has um, Luis Enrique as well. Um, and of course, Spurs legend Darren Anton has come out and said that Brendan Rodgers would be a good fit at Tottenham. 
Um, personally, I'm hoping that we do now go for a young manager, an upcoming manager, go for a project. You know, these last couple of managers that we've had, um, Jose Mourinho and Antonio Conte, we've brought in win now managers. It hasn't worked because these win now managers want everything. Um, and rightly so. You know, they're, they're used to winning, they're used to demanding, they're used to um, getting the best out of players and they are used to having top quality players. And if you're not going to give them everything that they want, then it's never going to work. Um, and it clearly hasn't worked under Jose Mourinho and Antonio Conte, managers that have won every single place they have gone apart from Tottenham Hotspur. Um, personally, um, you know, when Antonio Conte left and we had 10 Premier League games left, of course, we've got eight Premier League games left now. Um, personally, for me, I would have thought um, the best choice would have to have gone for um, somebody that the fans know, like Pochettino, like Harry Redknapp, you know, someone that the fans can really get behind because I feel that, you know, if we lose a game or two under Christian Stellini, I don't think that the mood... Uh, will be very good at all amongst the fan base. Um, the fan base is very mixed at the moment um, about the direction of the club, the ambition of the club. I think we're all questioning the ambition of the club. Um, we have to do things differently to what we have done in the past. Um, as I've said on this channel many, many times, I feel that the board have got so many decisions wrong um, in recent times. Sacking Pochettino, I think that uh, that was wrong at the time. I, I feel that we should have backed him. Um, sacking Jose Mourinho six days before a final, um, that was wrong in my opinion. Uh, waiting 72 days for a manager and then bringing in Nuno Espirito Santo, that was a really poor decision. Um, and of course, it hasn't worked out for Antonio Conte either. So this next decision is absolutely huge. Um, being linked with the likes of Vince and company, I think he is a great up and coming manager. He's done wonders at Burnley. Is he the right man? I'm not so sure. Um, is Brendan Rodgers the right man for Tottenham? I'm not so sure. Um, you know, Nagelsmann, um, you know, you've got, we're being linked to the final manager at the moment, Arnie Slot. Um, so many managers are being linked to this job. It's going to be interesting. But my big question at the moment is who in, who is in charge of this managerial uh, appointment? Because with Scott Munn, um, on gardening leave until the 1st of July, you know, that is clearly uh, not going to, uh, you know, be be great for timing. Because, of course, you know, we'll be back, the players will be back for pre-season. Um, so, it, it, interesting times ahead. Thanks for watching and thanks for listening. I hope you enjoyed it. If you're watching this on YouTube, please do hit that subscribe button, like, share and comment below. And if you're listening to this on an audio platform, please do hit that follow button and leave a review if you can. Enjoy the rest of your week. I'll see you on the next one. Until then, come on you Spurs.